Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hope all is well and everyone is doing all right. Uh, looks like everybody or majority is in. Uh, before we get rolling, uh, anybody have any general questions or concerns? Everybody good? Everybody straight? Write this note down real quick. All right, so I believe today we're getting into five three. All right, so we're looking at 5.3 associations and categorical variables, and we are going to reference or refer to the table in five, section 5.2. So for those of us who didn't see that table, maybe missed last class. That is this table right here. All right, anybody need to copy of this before I keep going? All right, everybody good? All right, hand raised. Or that just let me know you need to copy it? Um, let's see. Okay, I'll give you a few seconds. Let me know once you've done. Um, professor, I'm finished with it. Thank you. 
Not a problem, not a problem, thank you. All right, so let's look at conditional probabilities. Um, All right, so we're looking at conditional probabilities, probabilities of an event that are affected because another event has already occurred, so it's conditional. Um, notation, and you have the probability of A, and we have this slash B. And it's more like a line. Most of slashes are normally like, you know, slanted, but it's a straight line. Um, a with the line between B, A and B. Uh, there's the probability that event A occurs given that event B has already occurred. So that's what that notation means. Let me make more room. I just want to. All right, so calculating a conditional probability 
if you want to find the probability of A, given that B has already occurred, you can either find the probability of A and B and place that over the probability of B, or if you have the numbers, um, like with the chart that we have, you can use just the numbers, uh, the number that's in the category of A and B, place it over the number that's in the category of B. And uh, either way, you still should get the same result. All right, suppose a person is chosen randomly for the chart. What is the probability a person has less than a high school degree is married? All right. So the way we want to set this up, so suppose a person is chosen, not chosen, uh, uh, what is the probability a person has less than a high school degree is married? So we're talking about the probability someone is married given that they have less than a high school degree in other words they didn't graduate high school all right so let's look at the easier way of looking at it first um let's look at you know just pulling the numbers um here, you know, we just look at the number. So if we go according to, you know, just letters, I'm going to call M married, L less than high school degree. So we need the number that's um, married and less than high school. And then we need the number or less than. So let's go to the chart. You guys chart probably be easier to get to than mine. All right. So we're looking at less than high school and married. That's 70. And then the total number of less than is 125. So our probability is going to be 70 over 125. Uh, they put a decimal value up here as well. Once again, make sure you're okay with, um, I mean, you're reading directions on what my math lab is asking of you. All right, so if you have a chart, 
then it's easy to just pick out the numbers of what you need. All right, but it still works out the same way. It'll still give you the same number, 0.56, if you have to use probabilities. And so let's look at it uh, using the probabilities and see how it still works out. Now we're looking at um, but before I go down here, is everybody okay with how we got these answers up here? You know, all you did is pull the numbers from the chart. This wasn't well, not that. This, this top number is the number of you know those who are married and had less than high school degree. And then that bottom number is the total number of all people that had less than a high school diploma. All right. So now if I were to use and set this up with the probabilities, let's go back. We're talking about the probability of choosing someone who has, uh, who is married and has less than a high school degree. Where's my chart? Where's my chart? Now your probability is going to be that number which is this number right here, over your total number of options, which our total number of the options is 665. So that probability is going to be 70 That probability is going to be 70 over 665, because that's our total number, that's our sample space. Remember we talked about that last class? I uh, believe class previous as well, sample space, that, that big number, that total number of all outcomes. And then the probability of someone having less than a high school uh, diploma. Remember that was 125, so that's 125 over that same 665 because that number didn't change. Same group of people. And so now we can see how that still is going to work out for us. In this case, uh, don't get your fraction work. I'll go ahead and walk through it. But whenever you're dividing by a fraction, write this right. You know, this fraction bar right here is the same thing as that fractional sign. So all I did was went from writing it vertically to horizontally. But whenever you're dividing by a fraction, you're multiplying by the reciprocal. So now this changes the multiplication and I'm flipping the other fraction. 60, uh, 665 will cancel. And now if I multiply across, it'll just be at 70 over 125, which still give me the 0.56. So just showing you that either way, whether you use the numbers or you use probabilities, you still should get the same answer. And, um, you know, whatever is uh, available to you is what you will be able to go for. So let me see. Yeah, we got some work that we use the probabilities in a second. All right. So before we uh, use this, uh, more or in more ways, but uh, any questions on what we did there? <clears throat> Excuse me, can I scroll up? Is that okay? All right, so. So the conditional probability rule is going to be rule five. But also you can manipulate that. Let's say if I were to solve that or multiply both sides by the probability of B, that bottom. Oh, 
So those are the same formulas, like I said, but uh, if we take the first one and multiply both sides by the probability of B, then that's what you have in the second one. So we're just using the same formula in a different way. Let's go deep in it first. I know that was my fault. All right. I could have wrote that a little differently, but it's all good. It's good enough. So dependent events are going to be events that are associated. And when you're talking about associated, it means that they are events that have conditional probabilities or probabilities that change depending on the different conditions. All right. So they are dependent on each other. That's why they call it dependent events. All right, so um, when you're talking about independent events, the events that are not associated and the conditions, this means that the conditions of one event does not affect the probability of the other or the probability of one event does not affect the probability of the other. Yeah, either way, it's really.
All right. And so uh, the one way we will be able to test whether events are independent or not uh, numerically is that at the probability that A given, uh, the probability of A given that B has already happened is equal to the probability of A. So in other words, knowledge of B does not affect the probability of A occurring or, or the probability of B occurring does not affect the probability of A occurring. Garage door. All right, so suppose we have the student future card deck. All the events, the card is a diamond and the card is red independent. If you find out another player holds a red card and you want to know if he has a diamond. So, um, yep, yep, yep. So this goes back to our standard 52 card deck. Uh, we talked about, you know, the details on that. Uh, we know how many face cards, 13 cards in each face and all this good stuff like that. 13 cards in each suit and all this stuff like that. So we want to know are these two events independent and we're looking at the probability of getting a diamond given that the card is red. All right. Now, if they are independent, remember what we did here, if they are independent, then we need to explore the probability of A given B and then also establish what the probability, and we can do that you know, while we're doing our calculation, also looking at the probability of just getting a diamond. All right. 
And if those are equal, then that means the probabilities um, or the events are independent. That means it doesn't help me knowing that you have a red card. In other words, if we're playing a card game, if I find out you have a red card and I want to know if you have a diamond, does it help me uh, knowing that you have a red card if I want to know if you have a diamond? Does it change any of my probabilities? So, uh, right. So it's probably easier to find because we've got to find the probability of getting a diamond first anyway. So that was simple enough. Matter of fact, I'm going to make that make that one red since I had the red line. Probability of getting a diamond. There are 13 diamonds in the deck and then 52 cards all together. So the probability of getting a diamond is just 13 over 52. You know, if you want to reduce it to one fourth, that'll work as well. Any problems with that? Yeah, where did you get 13? Uh, I just wrote it. It's 13 diamonds in the deck. Yeah. So that goes all the way back to, I think that was 5 1, where we, we talked about, you know, standard 52 card decks, how many diamonds in each face. I mean, not how many diamonds, but how many cards in each suit. You know, there's 13 diamonds, 13 hearts, 13 clubs, 13 spades. Uh, you know, 13 times four will give me that 52. Um, you know, and so, and then for each suit, you have four, you know, hey, you have a king. So there's four kings all together, four queens all together, four jacks all together. So um, that goes back to that. All right, everybody good with that before we go to the... All right, so now we want to see if the probability of getting a diamond, given that the card is red, are they, oh, well, what is that probability? So we have to look at the probability of diamond and red. Right and place that over the probability of the red. All right, so you're talking about being um, probably diamond and red. All right, so the probability of being diamond and red. I want to say diamond and red. Yeah. It should be. Because out, out of the red card, that should be. And let me go here. I didn't get myself wrong. I don't want to go 13 out of 26. So 26 out of 52. Let me show you my probabilities right. Um, yes, yeah, so there should be 26 or 52. 26. Red cards. So, one six over fifty two. Hold on, I'm in red. No, 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 no. Hold on one second. Should be twenty six or fifty two down here. Red cards, and then thirteen out of fifty two. Up here, yeah. Then that give me one. Half. Yeah. Okay. So, if you're talking about diamond and red, of course, all of your diamonds are red. So that's why there's still 13 over 52. That top probability. It'll be different if uh, 
you have some diamonds that were not red, but out of your 52 cards, the diamonds that are red is 13. All right, all of your diamonds are red. So that's why that's 13 over 52. Then bottom, we say uh, how many red cards are there? What well, are 26 red cards in the deck? Remember, there are two suits that are red, two suits that are black. So that's why we have 26 over 52 on bottom. All right. So then when we go to reduce this, you remember the last time we did this when we divided them out um, and you multiply by the reciprocal, those 52s will cancel. And that'll leave you with 13 over 26, which is one half. All right. So before we make our conclusion, questions on what we did there. All right. What was the help? I say it's useful. All right, so since the probabilities are not equal, the events are not independent. And this means that knowing that someone has a red card is useful in determining if that person has a diamond. All right, questions before we do another one.
All right, so a card is face down. This time you want to know if your opponent has an ace. You discover he has a diamond. Um, I should say he already has. I should say he already has a diamond. So you discover he already has a diamond. Is this helpful? So basically, once again, it's just uh, they're asking, are these events independent? Just another way of asking, are these events independent? All right, so once again, we're looking at the probability of knowing a car, of what is a car, given that you already know a car. So we want to know what's the probability of getting an ace if you already know that the person has a diamond. All right, you got a chance to write before we go up. All right, so we want to know the probability of getting an ace given that the person already has a diamond. Um, we know we want to know what an ace is. Probability of getting an ace, there are four aces in the deck, so that's four over 52 which is 1 13th, 1 out of 13 ch chance of getting an ace. All right, so now if I want to know the probability of getting an ace given that I already know that you have a diamond, first thing we want to look uh, to find the probability of getting an ace and a diamond. There's only one ace of diamonds. So that's one out of 52. Ace of diamonds, that's what you say, diamonds, yeah, ace of diamonds. Only one ace that is a diamond. And then how many diamonds are there in the deck? There are 13 diamonds in the deck. So that's 13 out of 52. All right, everybody okay with that? So just like before, this 52 over 52 will cancel. And that probability left will be one over 13. So any questions before we get to our conclusion?
So since the probabilities are the same, that means the events are independent. This means that knowing someone has a diamond does not help you determine if they now have an ace. Alright, question before we look at the last thing out of this section. Call this five C. If you go back to uh, rule five, you kind of call this one five A, they call this manipulation five B. So that's why they're looking at this one and calling it five C. It's the same formula, just manipulated a little different in which um, it says if So uh, it's just manipulation, like I said, of rule five. Um, but it says that uh, if your events are independent, then you can multiply your two probabilities together and find a probability of both of those occurring. All right, so suppose that 51% of all babies born in the U.S. are boys. What is the probability of a family planning on having two children will have two boys? All right. So these events, I guess I'll write that here. All right, so these events are independent. Um, and they, they talk about how researchers have done blah, 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 blah. But, you know, basically the idea that uh, you having a boy 
Um, the first time has nothing to do with you having a boy the second time or having a girl the first time has nothing to do with you having a girl or boy the second time. So these events are independent. Um, so if you have events that you know are independent, and we look at the probabilities of, a ha of having whatever it is you're all talking about having. So let's see, probability of having a boy, we say it's gonna be 51%, which is 0.51. So now we're looking at the probability of having a, a boy first. And write that better. And then boy second. Oop. So you're talking about having a boy first and then a boy second. All you're gonna do is do 51 or 0.51 times 0.51. And that's gonna be 0 0.260. And so that's all they're saying that if you have uh, probabilities that are independent of each other, or in other words, one thing has nothing to do with the other, or the chance of one occurring has nothing to do with the other, then all you do is multiply those probabilities together, and that would be the probability of both of those occurring. All right, so uh, same thing would happen for us or could happen for us if they asked us about a boy being first and a girl being second. So we already saw the probability of getting a boy is 51%. But if probability of getting a boy is 51%, that means the probability of getting a girl is one minus that 51, which is 0.49. And we'll go ahead and multiply those two together. So we will do that. All right, questions before we at least do one more.
All right, so toss a fair coin three times. A fair coin is equally likely to land up either side when tossed. What is the probability that all three tosses are tails? All right, so first thing we do have to establish if these events are independent or dependent. And of course, flipping a coin, uh, it's a fair coin. Um, so flipping it once has nothing to do with you flipping it the second time or anything like that. So um, you know, landing he heads first time does not affect it landing heads the second time or landing tails the second time. So these events are independent. So now I need the probability of landing tails. And we talked about that one before. So now you want to establish your sample space. You know, there are two sides or two choices, heads and tails. And then the number of tails is just one. So that's why our probability is just going to be one over two. You know that two, you know, there are two options, heads and tails. And just one option in the event, which is tails. So that's where we're getting those numbers from. Whoa. All right. Any questions? All right, so talking about the probability of tails three times in a row, that's going to be one half times one half times one half, which would be one eighth. Uh, and any, any questions, any questions? Um, what if So what about two heads and one tail? You know, would that change anything for us? We already said that it's, um, it's independent. We already said the probability of getting tails is one half, but also we only have one other choice. That means the probability of getting heads is one half as well. So 
So probability of going, let's say, two head, one tail. It's still going to be the same thing. One half times one half times one half, which would be one eighth. All right, questions on that. Any questions? Any questions? All right. So I believe that is it for five, three. All right, so we have one more section to go in chapter five. Um, uh, we can knock that out on next week. But I uh, just wanted to let you guys know I got to go out of town for a funeral this weekend. So if you do send me an email uh, this weekend, we're actually leaving um, in, a, in a couple of hours or so. So if you do send me an email this weekend, maybe a little slow getting to it. I may not be able to get to it until Sunday. It just depends on, uh, you know, how things go. So just letting you know, uh, just give me a heads up if you were to uh, try to contact me and I don't get right to it. Um, but yeah, so any questions or concerns before we close out today? Everybody good, everybody straight? And I, probably I have a question. So mm -hmm. will 5-3 be posted on Pearson today? I'm going to try to get to it. Cause like I said, we're trying to um, prepare to uh, leave out in a few. So I'm going to try to do that before I leave. All right, that is my goal. That is my goal. All right, anything else? Anybody else? Everybody good? Everybody straight? All right. So, you guys have a good one. I showed up, see somebody in the chat. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. All right. So, see you guys on next week. Have a great weekend. Be safe and uh, take care. Professor? Yes. Actually, I have a question. I just don't want to hold up class. All right. Do um, I need to stop? Do I need to stop recording? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. It's okay. not. Yeah, it's not like that. <laughs> um, it's with the homework assignments. I know very at the very beginning, uh, even in your announcements, it says um, if you get 75. Hold on, Trinity. Um, you said it's a 75. <laughs> um, it's a 90 in your book. Mm -hmm. So if do you want us to try out all the questions or <laughs> once I get to 75, 80? And I just, you know, go to the next one. Does that count? You know? Yeah, that's how however you want to operate. All I'm gonna do is look at the score. I'm not gonna go in there and start analyzing. Okay. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. nah. Like she, she ain't go all the way. So <laughs> Yeah, that's how I was I'm like, dang, does he want us to try at least all of them? No. Because oh, you know, like, or can I just get to 80 and like maybe stop right here? But I don't so, do that to all of them, just like the ones that I'm struggling with. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'm you pretty, know. I heard that baby uh yelling in the back. I got, I got time to do all this stuff. Exactly. It's like, mommy, mommy. Like, okay, okay. Let me just go ahead and take a break. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um. So, and then, you know, even if you shoot for at least 85, you still get the 100. I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to be that detailed. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Um. Like he said, fine. safe travels and thanks, thanks. You know, be safe out there. Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate it. You have a good one. Anybody else? Everybody good? All right, take care.